From Jack Daly, Paul, a fairly simple question. I've heard a lot of landscape painters reducing the intensity of their greens, particularly yellow green, as they seem to dominate the picture. I've heard commercially, commercially pictures with intense yellow greens don't sell as well also. Would you reduce the chroma of greens in a landscape? Uh, so let's talk about it, Jack. This is an interesting question. Um, I've heard that too. I mean, uh, in fact, the Boston, the, the students of Gamma have always been accused of, uh, or at least have been identified by having this acidic green, you know, <laughs> in their landscapes. Uh, I can suggest a reason that that could have happened to, to, to us to the extent that it did. But, um, but the reason, you know, the, the, but, the, but the reality about greens is there's no bad color. And I really like to have everybody sit on the idea that which color should we eliminate from the palette? So you'd say, well, commercially this or commercially that. Well, let's just look at a couple sergeants. I mean, like, which one of these would you eliminate? The one on the right is very green, but it's a remarkable picture. It's, it's a delight in, in its uh, spotting and, and this color. Is, you know, it's the unity of a beautiful day. The soft green grasses of the springtime, you know, with the critters on them. You know, so I'm here thinking to myself, that won't sell. I won't paint that picture. I'm sitting out there with this beautiful thing, and I won't do it, right? A nice color scheme. The greens, you can see the, the, the type of reds and other colors integrating, you know, tying on, uh, relating beautifully to that uh, green thing. So what's the bottom line, right, with greens? Is there, a green, is there a color you must eliminate from your palette? Or you should just never use, you know, no matter how, whether it's in nature or not. Well, the answer is always going to be if you have a picture of a setting, a landscape, and it's really a beautiful thing, and that color is a portion of it. If you can paint that color right to the rest of the colors, you will get that beauty, right? If you can't get the color relationships right, you won't get that beauty. So the only reason you'd ever have to dumb down a green is because, you know, say, you have a more intense red somewhere. And uh, it would be a case like this. If you have this red so intense... And it should be way above these greens. You put these greens in there and you can't get the red any redder, any more intense, then you may have to dumb down these greens. But that's what we do anyway. We always, the whole thing about keying is getting your colors to play in the right, in the right relationship to each other. So the intense colors playing to each other would be a big deal, right? So no, I don't know of any reason. Everything is relational. So there, there's, got, there's bound to be a day when that's just the right color. That, that, that chrome green. Here's, here at the bottom is DeCamp using that green. What's wrong with that green, right? Is there anything wrong with this green? Here it is distributing its way around the picture a bit. I'm, I'm going to look at this one for a second because potentially this might have had, it, it's a pretty bright day, sh sharp, shadowy uh, sun, sun shadows, uh, shadows from the sun. But the most intense color of this is brown, right? So the grass may have been green, but it may have been a case where he had to paint, he had to neutralize these a little bit just to get the relationship between the intensities. That would be the sort of place where that would happen. And it's the only reason not to do it. You know, apart from, as I said, gallery owners saying they can't sell them. But yeah, I, I would argue that the hardest thing to sell in the world is any color out of place with the rest of the colors in the picture. So I would bet that, you know, green isn't really the problem. And the problem really is, do you have a, do you have your, your, your relationships under control to make the symphony that you see before you? So, um, yeah, so I'm just showing you, the, uh, by the way, a bunker here, all these greens. Now, these aren't the acidy greens you're talking about, and the reason for that is it's a gray day. So you don't have, you, you just don't have the same potential. Now, here he's, uh, he's got these guys to contend with, right? And this value he's found, uh, this value and this value are mo both much brighter in value. That's a lighter in value than this one. So at some point, he had to keep this one down. It, it wasn't the equivalent of this, so it was never going to be, even though it was a sunny day, this was never going to be able to be as intense if he wanted this glorious blast of light, which is the focal point of this picture. So that's the reason those things go down. There's no formula. that you, There's no something you should obey. Just take, a, take an intensity. You know, I'm going to show you a different one soon, soon that really has, well, there it is right there, actually. Look at this picture on the left. That's, that's, that's by a student of mine. Now, you may say that feels gaudy, but the fact is, when you look at that, you see an incredible sense of daylight, don't you? What do you think is causing that? You could say it's the general intensity of the picture. This might look a little bit strong, uh, but this, this, this is the big, big, big reason. It's these brilliant chromas. Uh, this is John Peterson, by the way, just to get a, a word out there to him. Now, here's a, a similar field with something out there. I don't think it's very sunny, though. It seems more of a hazy day. So even though it's a big green field, 
It probably would do this on a different day, but on this day it's hazy, and so it's sitting down quietly, just like that one we're talking about with, uh, with Bunker a second ago. So the real question, is this the right color and chroma to all the others, right, to all the other notes in this picture? And if it is, then, then you're going to get benefits, you're going to get glorious things. But the, the feeling of open daylight here, you know, it's as good as it can be done. I mean, it's just amazingly lovely. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so here's an evening light, same thing, green fields. You can see that the greens, any, a picture can be green. This, this is a basically an overall green picture, but it's not, it's, it's, a, it's a neutral green. So don't throw out greens, but if you said there's an acid green picture, well, we'll still even talk about that later. The second question might be, is, is intensity a problem? Because here's a picture that really has a massive intensity. Does that make a picture, picture unsaleable? Well, so should green intensity be more offensive than orange intensity? That's, for me, just one of those myths, one of those fantasies out there. I'm sorry these aren't better pictures. This is from the Hawthorne, uh, uh, the, the, the um, he, not Henry, what's the guy's name? Uh, um, Henshi world. And here's your famous acidy green, right? And this is really on that way off to the yellow. So, I mean, this is almost yellow, but you can feel there's a, there's a hint of green. It's also a warm green, which is actually remarkably true out there in these grasses. And it's rather, by the way, easy to miss that when you're doing these, what we're going to call these, these, these chrome uh, blue type greens. When you look outside, the first thing you think of might be the grass is a blue type type green. But if you look around and don't and take in the grass while you're thinking big, while you're looking at the hole, you'll always see more orange on a sunny day than you believe, than you can believe. And you'll, you'll need to go through red, yellow, and blue to get the right amount of red into it. So the intensity here, though, isn't a bad thing, is it? Look what it does. I mean, what's, how, how would you say that's bad, right? There's the brilliance of that gold, yellow, whatever it is. Uh, I don't know whether that was a, a field of, of hay that was past its prime, you know, on the hot summer day. But there's one of those points where you might lose the hot summer day by not painting that intensity. You'll lose the heat of the day, much like the previous one uh, by John would have lost the, um, you know, if he didn't have that, the day would have not been anywhere near as lit. So, um, yeah. So what's bad about it, right? And then again, does it design badly? No, it's a question of whether you have the relationships right. And the unity of this world, you know, is if it looks beautiful when you're there, when you're on the spot, if it looks, if it has, if it hangs together and has unity and the notes all be, are all right to each other per the, your view, right? Then, uh, then it will have the same beauty when you get the canvas done, if the relationships are right. So, yeah. Uh, Here's a, another green, there's a couple of basically green pictures, the variations in green all through the blues and stuff like that. This is, um, uh, this is Hale. This is DeCamp, Joseph DeCamp. Again, I don't know, I mean, these greens may be not exactly what you mean, but I'm sure this is the guy that said paint straight and true like a Christian. He would not be dumbing down his colors. But the truth that he's talking about, and this is where a lot of people just don't get it, the truth is in the relationships. So this could be said to be that, Acidy, whatever you called it, that 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 yellow green. No, that that probably is it. But he's again got all these guys to contend with. So how 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 high can he raise that value? He can't paint it as it were, maybe side by side, literally right. He's only got he's got to get the light effects and the and the reds into these lights and all that sort of thing, and then say, and where do you land by both value and intensity? And that's what determines where his greens land. No, but I'm stating the obvious, right? This every impressionist knows this. I love this one down the bottom right. This is Theodore Robinson. I believe it's Theodore Robinson. Yeah, I'm thinking so. <laughs> I hope so. No, it could be. Um, it could be uh, Vanna. I've lost. I've lost my connection with this one. But there's the wonderful example of that, which you may as well call acid. But now this is a green picture, and the colors are all moving from these yellow greens all the way through to warmer, cooler, whatever, all sorts of values and and intensities of green. It's a green display. It's a green ensemble. It's a delightful thing, and I can't think that you'd want to get rid of this one. <laughs> where the center of interest is and all the light sort of, sort of really features, you know, really sort of um, rises to the occasion as a center. So I can't think of, I just look at pictures. I mean, whenever you hear rules like that, by the way, and you're thinking, um, we must do this, we must do that, or mustn't do this, or I won't get a good picture, just ask what your higher rule is, right? But for an impressionist, the great rule is, if the ensemble is beautiful, my job is to get the relationships right until it does what the ensemble does. The ensemble of color notes, color value notes. So here's a Bob Hunter, uh, and there's that green. Now, 
you can see this is not as yellow as this one, so you probably don't mean it in that case. But if you ask me whether I thought he was artificially taking the yellow out of this one, I suggest to you this picture might have been a little better if he had more yellow in it to go and warmer yellows, <laughs> but more intense even to go with this whole thing. It wouldn't hurt a thing, right? I'm going to suggest to you that what's really happening is this is exactly the right color value to these other notes out here, because that was the kind of painter that Bob Hunter was, Robert Douglas Hunter. Here again, there's a, uh, these are two by Willard Metcalf, and I'm still asking you that question. And by the way, you, this is where you know you can't trust the uh, media, the internet. Uh, these images are all lit beyond hope, you know. But again, is this an ugly picture? Is this in some way an unsaleable picture, right? There's no way in the world that is. I'm sure, I'm sure somebody owns that and is extremely happy with it. <laughs> and I'm sure it left, it left the, uh, I'm sure it left the uh, um, gallery uh, without, without having to sit there too long, right? Now you may like, uh, you know, one may like to have those types of greens limited. I mean, first of all, because they're pretty bright spots and it, it, you know, it sort of powers up a spot. And if you do it all over the place, well, in this case here, there's a light picture. That's one of the things that makes this less, as it were, if otherwise conceivably could be too much of a good thing. But it's so much the same value as the whole picture that's center of interest are the dark reds. So the reds own this picture. And uh, if you want to say the, the secondarily, the uh, blue greens, the darker greens, they're making up their own little games. But no, what would you say? I mean, is that a picture we shouldn't have or we shouldn't do or won't sell? Nah, not likely. And it just hit the note. It's just the relationships. And look at that glorious sun hitting the hillside in New England. So here's Degas. And that's where I really think you ought to think hard about whether we want to be exclusionary. Because, frankly, I've never particularly liked this yellow. But I love this picture as a color picture. I love the color of this picture. I love the whole... But it's a series of games. And it's the way this yellow is used. And then picks up again in different places and evolves. And those kind of sorts of things... And then their interplay between the, the, the reds, I said the yellows rather, and the blues and the yellows and the reds, uh, the interplay, the, the, you know, there's just no end of interplay between the, the stuff. And he's always in the search of a symphony for these parts coloristically and, uh, uh, in, you know, um, in terms of drawing elements, you know, the more linear elements to be, to be playing with each other. It's, it's the, guy's, the guy really does, <laughs> I say it over and over again, the guy actually gets, he gets it. I don't know if anybody's ever got it to the degree that Degas gets it, whatever that is, whatever it is, right? Uh, so here he is doing it again. You know, which green? Is that a green you'd really want to put in the middle of a picture? That'll never sell. We can't sell pictures that color, you know? Just don't think that way, okay? Uh, the color, if the picture is beautiful or it's not beautiful, and it's all in the color relationships, right? That's where, it's, where the beauty rises. Yeah, so here's, a, here's down below here is a Surat, I believe. And then a couple of... Uh, uh, and by the way, again, I can't attest to this rightness of this. This could be completely wacky. Uh, so I can't be sure. But you can see that this idea of a lit field with that, you know, which you may as well call an acidy green. But then the whole day has this lit feeling about it. You know, overall, you know, there's just a heavy, uh, a good level of intensity in the air. But here you can see uh, Monet using the, the greens. There's that probably right there would be the perfect example of that type of green. I can't see any reason that anything bad that it does to this picture. Why would I kill that? Why would I knock that down? If you think you already knocked it down, you don't understand Monet. You don't understand any Impressionist. I don't know if I said that again. Paint straight and true like a Christian, the model. <laughs> if I said that before, I mean, paint straight and true like a Christian, the model of DeCamp is really quite a, uh, it's quite a telling thing. These guys are actually investigating. They're searching out the beauty of nature. They're not trying to make art. And that art model, though, I mean, that's what so many people are talking about when they talk about galleries. Uh, they, they have this art model instead of this beauty and truth model. And that's what I would frankly be aware of, be, beware of, right? I don't know why I showed these two. I think they show you that their pictures can have a ton of green in them in these cases. But the amount of the counterbalance of, of, these, of these yellows and the blues and the reds and all those sorts of things, even though, it's, even though the greens are there, they serve, in this case, they serve almost like background. <laughs> so... Uh, and here they're foreground, but you see your eye wants to be in this warmer middle section, so it serves as a, in a sense, a kind of a pusher back. Uh, there's something you don't much need to spend much time on up here. But um, yeah, but greens are part of multiple good scream is, uh, schemes. This could be said to be a, a yellow, orange, purple, I mean, sorry, a green, orange, purple, you know, the secondary color sort of scheme. Um, and these are both uh, Theodore Wendell 
Oh, they, I apologize. I forget. Are they Wendell or Vona? Uh-oh. I think they're Wendell. So, greens, here we are again. And there I mentioned earlier, I think. No, I didn't. I mentioned another video. But there's that acid green that's sitting there right in front of your, of your, right in the middle of the center of your picture. And how is it bad? <laughs> that's the feeling of sun. That's the warmth of the day right there. And he nailed it, right? Really got it. And it wouldn't have worked without it. So take in the hole. And how is that a bad note? It's a dead on good note, right? It's perfect for the picture. Is it a dumbed down note? Don't bet on it. These guys didn't think that way. They wouldn't have painted there if it was ugly in its general masses, in its general value relationship, its general intensity. He wouldn't have painted. He wouldn't have sat there. And, they did not sit there and make stuff up. What did Tarbell say? He just hoped to make one truly like before he died. So how is that the mind of a guy that's tricking the system and is saying, well, we mustn't do this, and we've got to do that, and we've got to fake this, and we've got to artificially adjust that, you know, every time, you know? No, no. I mean, there, 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 there may be moments when you're painting, and, um, uh, but there won't be many if, you, if you're standing in front of nature. I mean, those moments when you, when you might say, you know what, this, if this red was just a tiny bit redder, I would have a little more glorious harmony here or something. Or I'm talking about, say, this into this, into the trees or something. You might be thinking that, but you might also be thinking, this thing's beautiful, so let me maybe understand it better and see how this works with this, with this, where that beauty comes from. Because maybe I'm wrong. I'm going to torque this picture into yesterday's picture. I'm gonna, you know, what is that? Same thing with all these goats up here. I mean, these are definitely the very definition of that acidy thing, I think, or that, well, you didn't call it acid. That's my words. I didn't mean to put words in your mouth, Jack. But yeah, and, and there, this picture, of course, is heavy with green, but you see what a beautiful setting off it, it does for the, for the reds and the goldens and the, and, 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 and the, lesser, the lesser notes, like the blues. But, um, but it's particularly a great foil for the, you know, for their faces. And, um, and, 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 yeah, it's, this isn't a case, but I, again, I tell you, if they, if the, if they put the model there and her face, if the green was eating up her face, he wouldn't have kept painting. He would have moved them to a different place. That's the way the impressionist mind works. Even when we're setting it up like a still life, we expect it to be, as Gamble said, we expect it to be beautiful before we ever start painting. And we say that all, the picture is only going to, be, going to be as beautiful as that setting, as what you see in that, in that frame. So, and then I, th I had a, a, a workshop, pastel workshop, and I apologize to whoever it is. I should know who this is, but one of those guys um, sent me a photograph of this painting that they had done. It was, we, ha we have junk piles, you know, still had piles in ours that people can paint sections of as part of the, um, as part of the exercise. But here's that, here's that green. So I just happened to go buy it. But here's that green. It just happens to pick up the stem of this flower, whatever that is. And so there's this whole thing about these greens and are they good greens in relation to the whole or are they a good set in relation to all the other greens? You know, is that amusing or whatever? But this, this is where I'm trying to say that really is, there really, is there really a bad green? Is there a green that we mustn't do? Is that picture not going to sell because of these greens? It might not sell because it's not a brilliant composition, although it's fun. Uh, but it's, you know, in other words, people... Uh, Let's, let's leave it at that, you know. But these still lives aren't intended. They're, they're intended to be simple studies of stuff. And you take an angle. It's just the right angle. There's, a, there's sort of a perfect still life. But from other angles, it's just a pile of junk. And your job is just to hit notes and, of course, to try to find the beautiful relationships between things. Just like with the greens, by the way. Do you see how the reds and the, and the red, the various reds, or you want to say the orange to, to less to more red to more red to most red, you know, that travel. You know, that's the kind of stuff that we're looking for. We're not trying to say this color is a bad color. We never say that. We say, we say this set of colors makes a song. And that's the game, okay? All right. Well, then, good. Thank you, uh, Jack, for that question. And um, I better get out of here. Uh, uh, and, and thank you all for your, all that stuff, the comments, the shares, the subscriptions, all those things, donations. And, um, and I'm going to run off. See you in the next one.